Patch 10.1.5 is plenty to bring on several class reworks, including Holy Paladin, Guardian Druid, and some Mage Specs. One class that flew kind of under the radar slightly was some of the outstanding Brewmaster changes. In a recent article by Wowhead, they datamined a new talent called Press the Advantage, which will share a node with Weapons of Order. And <laughs> let me tell you, this ability is dope. Along with this, they're also slightly reworking some of the effects at the capstone, as well as adding in two other choice nodes in the class tree. So join me as I break down this talent, how it works, and all of the lovely synergies it has. All right, so the new talent is called Press the Advantage, and this is how it works. This is a passive ability that is going to replace Tiger Palm. Your auto attacks reduce the cooldowns of your bruise by 0.5 seconds and block your target's chi, dealing additional nature damage and increasing your damage dealt by 1% for 10 seconds. This is an aura buff on the player. Upon reaching 10 stacks, your next cast of Rising Sun Kick or Keg Smash will consume all of those stacks to strike again at 100% effectiveness. This bonus attack can trigger effects on behalf of your Tiger Palm at reduced effectiveness. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into kind of the general testing and where my mind went throughout this. So first, I wanted to just simply test auto attacks and see how the ability compares. So without any damage amps, press the advantage is roughly about the same as your auto attacks, though there is a caveat to this, which is dual wielding versus wielding just a pole arm. Now there is a way to increase press the advantage damage, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. Like I said, dual wielding is going to be far superior to a pole arm since you'll have an increased attack speed with double auto hits. Throughout my testing, I was able to get about 10 stacks over about 12 seconds. Now, of course, this is just autoing. When you factor in things like rotation and movements, this might be upwards between like 15 to 20 seconds, but nonetheless, it's going to be much faster where even just auto attacking took me about 30 seconds to gain 10 sacks of this aura buff. So this is really just going to incentivize dual wielding over single wielding. All right, so now at this point, I wanted to kind of test the cooldown reduction baseline of this ability. So I wanted to use Celestial Brew and then see how much seconds it would knock off. Now I am running Light Brewing, so my cooldown is 36 seconds. And after letting the auto attacks just kind of hit, this knocked about nine seconds off the 30 second CD. So roughly 25%. But again, this is only when you're actually autoing. So if you're using things like Spinning Crane Kick or you're not in melee range for some reason, you're not going to be getting that reduction. But nonetheless, still pretty powerful. This talent could actually replace Light Brewing if you wanted to, to pick up more damage with Training of Nizao without feeling really that much difference between your Celestial Brew windows. Okay, so now that we can we know what the cooldown reduction is from this talent. Let's kind of get into the damage. Now, each stack you gain will increase your damage by 1%, and this is for all abilities. So once you gain 10 stacks, you can choose to hold those stacks for a bit to deal more damage with something like spinning crane kick into a counter strike, maybe a bone dust brew window, or you can opt into dropping those stacks by casting keg smash or rising sun kick, which will then replicate that ability. Now, it's not going to add it to press the advantage. This is an actual replicated attack which is kind of cool this does provide a second keg smash which will also provide that cooldown reduction for your celestial brew meaning that if you're playing this talent you're going to be getting way way more cooldown reduction off of your celestial brew which is gonna be a good thing right it's gonna provide you with more celestial brew uptime therefore more absorbs therefore more healing pretty cool but it is currently bugged when i was testing this it was actually consuming both of my Keg Smash charges. So if you were sitting on two for some reason and you used the fully ramped, like all 10 stacks, it would just consume both. So you couldn't even Keg Smash again. I think this is a bug. So basically make sure you only have one stack or instead of two or use Rising Sun Kick. Okay, so we got that ability kind of figured out by itself. So I wanted to move on to seeing how it would interact with Tiger Palm talent. So my first thought was Eye of the Tiger. So at first I thought maybe it was every auto attack would apply Eye of the Tiger, which would be actually broken, but then I reread the ability and I noticed that it was every time you consume the 10 procs, it'll apply to the target. It does work if you Keg Smash or Rising Sun Kick, a little less uptime if you're just running Tiger's Palm instead, but this is going to save you a global and you're going to get that nice little damage increase from it. That's the only thing in the class tree that I can think about. So moving on to the spec tree, I wanted to see if Face Palm would work. So for those who don't know what Face Palm is, you might just skip over the talent without even really giving it much thought, but it's a 50% chance on your Tiger Palm cast that it's going to do 200% more damage. Now, this is obviously insane. Now, this does apply to Keg Smash and Rising Sun Kick, meaning that after you cast an RSK, it has a chance to replicate, dealing 200% damage. Now, the ability does read, so Press the Advantage does read, the ability 
deals damage at reduced effectiveness. So this might not be currently tuned properly, but we're going to test how high we can get in a second. But before I do that, I want to quickly test out the last two capstones. First, we have Chi Surge. This is going to proc every time you consume your 10 stack, and it's going to proc on either Keg Smash or Rising Sun Kick. Now, in AoE, this was roughly like a 4%, 5% damage gain, but it's still a damage gain. Now, this feels really cool hitting Rising Sun Kick and having Chi explode from your target, so this ability gets bonus points. Not sure if it'll be meta or not, but still pretty strong. Now, with Call to Arms, again, it's still going to... Both Chi Surge and Call to Arms are going to affect Weapons of Order still, but... The if you're playing press the advantage and choose to play call the arms, you're going to have a chance upon consuming 10 stacks to spawn Nizao. Now, we tested this and I was able to get six to spawn in about seven minutes of combat. So roughly one minute per proc. Now, you can get these back to back if you're lucky. That's kind of high, high RNG. But for the most part, it's like every third time you consume 10 stacks, you'll gain Nizao for 10 seconds. Now, this might be viable if you get your hands on a class trinket from Neltharion, but besides that, and I don't have it, so I can't test it currently, this could be actually a pretty strong combination, because that means about every minute you're going to gain upwards of 10,000 main stats for 10 seconds, which is pretty fucking rad, right? Now, Nizao is also being buffed going into this patch by 50%, which is pretty substantial, which could actually warrant, I haven't tested this in this video, but that could warrant a possible Black Ox build which would be pretty cool, and it would definitely change the meta. But we'll figure that out when it gets there. Now, one last talent that I wanted to try was Blackout Combo. Now, this deals, for those who don't ever play with Blackout Combo or don't know what it is, every time you Blackout Kick, it'll affect your next ability used, and it'll add an additional modifier. So, for example, like Breath of Fire will increase the periodic damage. If you Keg Smash, it'll take extra seconds off of your Bruise, etc. Now, with Tiger Palm, it increases the damage by a lot when you blackout kick and you have the blackout combo aura it actually will double the damage of each press the advantage tick making it so that you're just actually upping the value of press the advantage autos which is actually pretty cool so running blackout combo might not be the worst thing in the world especially if you're someone who doesn't like button bloat doesn't want to play with exploding keg now of course that is not optimal but now you can run blackout combo and get a little bit more damage out of press the advantage which could be the plane raid I don't think it'll be the plane mythic plus especially with how much CDR we're already getting from this talent by itself let alone light brewing but we'll have to see and now the very last thing that I wanted to test with this build was the maximum possible hit so there's a lot of cool things that this interacts with you have counter strike you have face palm and you have the tier set bonus so I wanted to make sure I can get all three going and then see how much damage I can do within one single global. What's the biggest hit that I can see? So we headed to Dazara Lore to face off against one of the tanking training dummies. Now, I could have done this in Valdraken, but I wanted to do it in a place that had a little bit more solace. So after about five minutes of testing, I was able to line up a counter strike with my leverage stacks with a lucky face palm proc on the rising sun kick. And my first Rising Sun Kick hit for a whopping 107k crit, followed by a 268k crit from Press the Advantage, which meant that I was doing 375k plus the Chi Surge proc, which was 15k, which could crit. Meaning that in a perfect scenario or like with a good roll of the dice, you're hitting for over 400k in a single global. And all of it's passive. So pretty cool. I really like the rework to this talent. And... I can't wait to see where Blizzard takes this. Now, more than likely, with things like bugged out keg smashes, as well as the press the advantage reading that it's going to do reduced effectiveness, but still having like the full effectiveness of Tiger Palm talents, I think that they're probably going to tune the numbers a little bit, but we'll have to see when we get there. Now, one last thing I just want to briefly mention is that they added two choice nodes into the class tree that share a node with Diffuse Magic and Dampen Harm. The one with Dampen Harm gives you 10% more dodge instead of taking Dampen, and the Diffuse Magic node will now have a stacking Absorb Shield for magic damage while you're in combat. I haven't tested these yet, but just from reading it, I think in higher keys you might opt to take Diffuse and Dampen still, but in lower keys with the tier set, you could take the increased dodge. And if you don't really know when to use Diffuse Magic or know how to optimize its damage component or its GR component, 
The Absorb Shield isn't a bad play either, and again, makes everything more passive. So I'll do a full passive build going into future weeks, maybe once 10.5 comes out, but for now, we're going to leave it at this. Press the Advantage seems really OP. I can't wait to play with it. I think it really does something proper to Brewmaster. The biggest complaint that I always hear is that it's button bloated. This removes Weapons of Order, and with the other talents removing Dampen and Diffuse, it turns it into a very, very passive tank that really only prioritizes doing Keg Smash, using Blackout Kick, and of course, Spinning Crane Kick as well and Breath of Fire, which is really cool. Again, I'll do a build on that. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will catch you all very soon. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters. Love you guys. Peace.